Man After Man, original book by Dougal Dixon. Illustrations and rewrite by Brian Byard, a.k.a. Caratrox. The five dwellers were the only creatures that survived the mass extinction, and after that, natural selection took hold. While the climate were warmed up to a point where the world is recovering from both the war and the asteroid, the fish Morphus and Froman didn't evolve in this time frame, but other species did. The desert dwellers adapted to life on the savanna and filled the niches of large grass-dwelling herbivores like buffalo and deer. They split off into three species under the subgenus Savannus. Plant Cliff, Homo plans dwellus. The plant cliff is a bipedal species that has adapted to life on the hot savanna. Since the climate is similar to the desert, the desert dweller is adapted to savanna life quickly. They live primarily off large savanna animals and will spend days looking for prey. They are also plant eaters and will strip bark off of trees. Unlike their ancestors, they can survive in other environments and can walk thousands of miles just to find food. They have long hair strands and a thick hide. They have long claws and hairs along their cheeks that resemble mustaches. Elephant Man, Homo elephantus. While all animals leaving Earth for a new home, the desert dweller adapted to become a large bulky herbivore, filling the niches of elephants and rhinos. The bipedal stance of the desert dweller was abandoned for a quadruped stance. While speed is limited, physical strength is increased as they can charge through the thick underbrush. They feed on grass and resemble elephants. They are distant relatives of the plant tiff, but are much heavier. They aren't much bigger than cattle, though. They shiver not from the cold, but from a feeling that they are living in a dying world. They have long claws on their toes, and one giant tusk. Their trunk is used for reaching up branches. The Cliffhanger, Homo Continuous One of the most effective predators of this new world, the Cliffhanger. It's a small creature, but an effective carnivore. It hides along the cliffs. Its thin body is superb at doing this. Not only that, it can change color to blend in surroundings. Then, when it catches its prey, it ambushes and delivers a venomous bite, similar to that of an inland taipan. It is a quadruped and is extremely agile. They live alone and hate each other's presence. They hiss and fight for their meals, and will tear each other apart for half a meal. Unlike their relatives, it has no fur and resembles a reptile, despite being a mammal. The Yenidra formed a subgenus called Sectoninal due to their ability to reproduce without a partner. This act is called asexual reproduction and is found in modern day reptiles. The Yenidra branched off into many different species as the climate warmed up. The Tundra Dweller, Homo antelopus. This light, small creature resembles the modern antelope, however they indeed humans. They are... They fill the niches of antelope, and they are animals who have lost their weight from their ancestors. They survive off berries, and are rather weak. They prefer to dine on berries, and gain most of their nutrients from fruit. However, the berries they need are scarce and scattered throughout the tundra. So they have adapted to survive off very little food, as they live in high-altitude regions. While they're not fond of each other's presence, they recognize they are too weak to do anything about it. Polar Dweller, Homo polison. After the mass extinction, the Yenidra and the Humoraptors were forced to evolve together, and forced a symbiotic relationship. The Polar Dweller has two breeds, Southern Polar Dweller and the North Polar Dweller. The northern variant is far less aggressive and has a symbiotic relationship with the descendants of the humoraptors known as crypaths. The crypaths are small and are great hunters, and they help the polar dweller find food. The polar dweller are bipedal and are extremely large. The crypaths are warmed up by their long fur. The southern polar dweller is much more aggressive. They have no symbiotic relationship with the crypaths and have long claws and will not hesitate to eject each other with them. Despite this aggressive behavior, they are migratory and travel in groups with each other. Fur is much reduced in this breed, as the climate they are used to is much warmer than the climate of their normal relatives they are used to. Like their relatives, they can reproduce asexually and take this a step further as the ability to control the date of birth. The Humoraptors took 
many wacky and wonderful forms. They created the subgenus Homo sorestria and took many evolutionary patterns. The sky's the limit, my friends. Paratophithecus, Homo pterodactylus. Speaking of the sky, one giant took to the sky. The Paratophithecus is a large flying creature and is the first primate to ever fly on its own. It lives by the coast and hunts for aquatic animals. One of its traits is long, fibrous hair on its chest and long, sharp teeth and claws. It drools to indicate hunger and fierceness, and flies using skin membranes, which can tear easily. They come together in massive groups when mating season comes, and are extremely social creatures who enjoy each other's companies. Despite their fearsome look, they are piscivorous. The Tropopithecus, Homo tropicalis. The Tropopithecus is an ape-like offshoot of the Humoraptors, which over time adapted to a more herbivorous diet, and live exclusively in the tropical forest, feeding on fresh fruits. They are solitary creatures, and express frustration towards each other's presence. It has a long tail for balance, and hair on their back legs, and no hair on their hands. They prefer the oranges to the apples, and avoid the poisonous flowers of the tropical forest. They are very solitary, and only get together during mating season. If they find each other while looking for food, they just roll their eyes. Fruit Eater, Homo dexteritus. This species of human shares a similar niche to its closest relative, the Tropopithecus. Unlike the Tropopithecus, it much, lives much higher in the trees, and the fruits it likes to eat are very high in its areas. It has special glands that it uses to produce a sweet smell to attract butterflies, in which it uses its long tongue to consume the butterflies. But they much prefer plants, such as fruit and vegetables, which are much more common in the tropical environments, so there's plenty of food. Their calls can be heard from several miles away, and they use these calls to attract mates. They appear to be curious critters, even though all of these post-humans have the intellect of a chimpanzee. Host sucker, Homo parasitus, a parasite unlike the relative of the crypaths. This host sucker is one of the natural enemies of the southern polar drawer, but not in a predatory, predatory way, in a parasitic way. Despite the it being primates, they're extremely tiny and not much bigger than a marmoset. They have long, gripping claws and are able to grip onto their fur and along proboscis. They don't drink nor eat meat, nor eat plants. They get all their nutrients and hydration from blood. Sometimes they can do this for hours. In place of a tail, there is a special tube it uses to store blood and can take, take it off so it can drink the leftover blood. While oh, they don't resemble any modern humans, nor their ancestors for that matter, one must remember that evolution doesn't occur when you want it. It occurs when you need it, and evolution can very much change the species. Crypaths, Homo sympaton. The crypaths are a small and friendly descendants of the Humoraptors, and have a, sex a symbiotic relationship with the polar dweller. They help the polar dweller find food, and the polar dweller repays them by keeping them warm in the frigid temperatures. They are extremely t tiny and very intelligent, just not as intelligent as humans. Unlike their little symbiotic friends, they're exclusively carnivorous. The plants of the tundra are very little help. 